So I attended Oticon for the first time. Here's my badge. I only went for one day, and that's Sunday. Um, and this is the shirt I wore. Uh, but I was able to interview um, a few vendors. So I'm just going to go ahead and add those clips right on in here. Hi. Tangmo and my art name is Art of Tangmo the studio. Um, I tend to make like surreal, pop surreal artwork and sometimes like uh, fan art of my favorite characters from Jujutsu Kaisen and Fire Emblem so far. Um, I got started when I was like five drawing but I started taking seriously when I was 15 and ever since then I've just been like making my own work, sometimes working for clients and selling in events like these. Um, it's something like I decided a long time ago. I just really wanted to make a living for my art and ever since then I've been like working towards like making pictures that I want to make and then it's really nice when I see my audience resonate with some of it too. And that's kind of what continues my inspiration for some of these pieces. So I think you have journals. Yes. What inspired the journals? Well, I've always really wanted to make stationery. That was like the one merch piece that I really, really want to make because I'm like a huge stationery fan too. I like like make collecting beautiful like scraps and paper and whatnot and putting it together in a journal and then drawing with it as well. And that's what ended up making me wanting to create my own. Well, I want to create more in the series of the biblically accurate um, angels with and inspired by that. And like I started with Gojo, I'm going to do Ghetto and Na Nanami. So I'm going to add those to the list. I'm also going to have added more like angel stuff as well here. Like I've noticed people are really enthusiastic about it. And I also really like the lore and they've been, been inspiring me lately. So this is like you've done research on like angel mythology. Yes, I have. Like extensive. Yep. <laughs> so then the, 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 the um, designs you have for your enamel pins are coming from that. Yeah, and also from my own like um, my own interpretations of them as well. Once I read what uh, when I, once I read up what they do and what they are, something like that. Okay, so um, you can look at my site Art of Tangmo. It's like in my site name. It's also in all my social media. I'm on Instagram, um, Twitter, TikTok mostly. I do have a Tumblr in case everybody still uses that. But yeah, that's where you can find me. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much. the book and all the character prints for 20. 
Yeah, just just three three right here. Yep. I'm sold out of the posters already. Oh so. My God, so yeah. You really did just yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My name is Quentin Dorsey. I'm the writing creator at Night of Abyss. Uh, I created this graphic novel. It follows three main characters, Knight, Nay, and Ruby. They find themselves caught in an ancient conflict between two warring empires. We're looking to bring about an ancient prophecy known as the Knight of Abyss. So that's the story synopsis. So volume one uh, contains issues one and two. Uh, I finished the Kickstarter last uh, month. I raised 11,000 for volume two, and that'll be out in October. It's been a childhood dream of mine, so just something I've been doing or something I've been dreaming about since I was a little kid. So uh, I started writing it during undergrad and graduate school. It took me about 10 years to actually finish the story. But in 2019, I finished the story and I hopped online. I linked up with a bunch of different artists and it kind of just blew up from there. Uh, so you're the writer and, and the creator. And uh, uh, so I'm the, I'm the writer and creator. I'm not the illustrator. Uh, the artist for this one, uh, her name is Kawaxa. She's from South Korea. But for some of the prints here, there's artists from all over the world, Europe, America. So yeah, I, I, look, I like to think of myself as a Stan Lee of this thing. So, you know, A&R, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I like to think uh, Night of Abyss is uh, intellectual, emotional, and spiritual. So uh, I think it, uh, the biggest uh, strength for anime is that it tries to help people grow in those areas. So you read the story, and eventually when it comes to anime, you watch the show, you'll grow in those areas and you can relate to the characters and I don't know, hopefully you'll cry. So, oh, yeah. oh you want to get emotional. <laughs> uh, my Instagram is K underscore O underscore Abyss, A-B-Y-S-S. -S. Um, you can hit the shop link and you can get the comment, all the prints and everything else. Now, how has your con experience been here so far this season? Oh, it's been amazing. Like this is this is a top-notch con. Uh, almost sold out of comics, so hey, can't complain. So now it's been really good. Yeah, shout out to Otacon. I'm definitely coming back next year. Nice. Well, thank you. Thank you. So my name is Meliza. Uh, my business is Mel Bell Rose Art. I like to make digital art and turn it into merchandise. And I love my OCs. <laughs> so starting from here, I have these new prints. These are debuting at Otakon. These are my 11 by 17 prints. I uh, worked on some ideas that I had and some of my uh, most proudest pieces are on display. <laughs> and so I had some new stuff and i also have charms some of them are new you know i have my genshin charms that i really wanted to debut for this con i love flower crowns so i've been making flower crown charms for a while okay. and i also have original stuff so these are my original characters i have charms i have buttons i have sticker sheets and they mean a lot to me <laughs> and so i have some old and some new and i also have new um large prints for my original work these are my ocs they mean a lot to me <laughs> and i really am happy to have debuted these at otakon because i found a lot of interested people who like my work okay um i've been drawing for ever i started drawing because of my sister and I remember in middle school, me and my best friend were like, oh, we want to sell our art. And so we were always interested in selling at New York Comic Con. And I went through a lot of things in my life, but I've always loved art. And so in 2017 is when I started my art selling journey. After I started working in the city, I decided I want to invest in creating art that I love. 
And it was also my awakening to realizing that I could create art of black people and black characters. And so that's what I did. <laughs> I think because most of my life I've been really into anime and manga and video games and a lot of the time when I see those series they're very near and dear to my heart but they usually don't have characters that look like me and one day you know I I was drawing I always draw my original characters but one day I realized oh I can make them black <laughs> I could just make them black like that sounds cool and it kind of spiraled from there um, I had a story that I was working on for since I was in high school and I just one day I decided yeah I'll make them black and uh, <laughs> um, that's it kind of just became like something that I was really passionate about because I've always wanted to tell my stories and I've always wanted to share like my ideas with the world and even though it's very difficult due to just the demand of being an artist it's something I'm still very passionate about. I am actually trying to work on creating a webtoon for these two characters in particular. Um, I really want to create a slice of life story, just a feel good story about, you know, being an adult and having to deal with adult issues while also, you know, building relationships with others and facing past trauma. So that's something I really want to do and I'm really excited about it. I am on all so social medias. I'm on Instagram, uh, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, Tumblr. I'm everywhere. You can find me anywhere at Mel Bell Rose Art. I also have a Patreon and I have an Etsy as well. Oh, nice. Nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Have a good rest of the time. Yeah, a lot of people that came over right when I was. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing though, but I'm glad that I did because I was able to actually look at oh, yeah. what you have here. So this is actually really cool. Thank you. Uh, it's all, it's, so these ones, I sold out of this one, that's why it's not here. But these ones are fairly old, so they don't really have the different expressions. But most of my stuff does, like with the... what is important and this is the historian's difficulty what counts as important what is important what isn't important so what you end up doing is you build a model of history not that kind of a model this kind of a model um, so this is my timeline of the anime that I think were um, either revolutions in anime or were emblematic of revolutions happening in anime at that point whether that show was massively popular or not, all these were massively popular, um, but whether or not like this is the thing everyone points to or not, these are all I think really indicators of what was going on in anime. So um, that said, let's go way, way back. Animation has a very long history in Japan. purchases for me this I got this journal from Art of Tom Mo and I got this print and this comic for uh, from Knights of Abyss and the keychain that I wanted from Mel Bell Rose Art she had uh, run out of already so I'm gonna go online and get that from her. But yep, yeah, so that was my purchases and everything from Otacon 2022.